Hi and welcome to Terex Bench. Today here in the lab we have this nice unit. So that is a Yaesu FTM 400. And uh, the FTM 400 really came uh, in with, uh, I believe, a very exciting um, problem. So um, the operator recognized that uh, he was not hurt any longer on the band, uh, also everything seems to be fine. And uh, then he tested uh, his output power and uh, he recognized that the power was uh, bouncing back and forth. So that uh, for um, a short while he had uh, full power and then suddenly it dropped down to only one watt and then maybe three, four, five and then back. So that uh, was uh, the situation uh, he recognized and yeah, so that is really sounding like a very interesting and uh, exciting problem. So we want to dig uh, into that and uh, first of all, of course, we want to see if we can reproduce what uh, he has seen and uh, then Let's see what we can do. All right, and uh, I've prepared uh, everything so far, and uh, we can go right uh, into the testing. So let me reposition the camera. So ah, maybe um, first we can check. Uh, let me see if I find the right um, setting here. I'm looking for a power setting. Yeah, that is uh, what I thought. Do not find it directly. So one moment. All right, and uh, here we have it. So uh, our TX power should be adjusted to high power, which uh, means on uh, the two meter band it should be. 50 watt and uh, therefore yeah let's uh, reposition the camera so that uh, we can go on and I think the best way is we start here with our analog um, meter just uh, to be able to uh, see it better so our meter is uh, set for 30 watt uh, power output right um, so that means here our lower scale is the one which uh, is um, relevant. So, okay, uh, radio is set to full power. Let's see what happens if I press our PTT. Okay. All right, so. Uh, first of all, what we can uh, say it is uh, 7.5 watt uh, output power. What uh, we don't see right uh, from the beginning is that uh, it is bouncing back and forth. So we have seen at uh, the beginning maybe a little um, instability, but uh, actually I do not see that uh, it is uh, bouncing back and forth. So maybe it is uh, heat dependent. Um, let me simply heat it up a little bit and uh, then let's see if we get uh, something different. Okay, it is uh, three minutes uh, later and uh, I have uh, pushed here the PTT a while and uh, trying uh, to get it uh, up and uh, I have seen uh, instability so um, I seen, uh, I've seen that uh, suddenly here the power goes like now uh, going over 10 watt you see that so that is definitely uh, not normal now we are at uh, yeah you see there it is still instable it's going up a little bit 12 almost uh, uh, 13, 12 and a half, don't know, and it's going back, 
So, um, yeah, I mean, what we have seen uh, directly uh, from the beginning is that uh, 7.5 watt is uh, definitely too low for uh, our highest uh, setting where uh, the radio should uh, be able to deliver 50 watt and uh, you see yeah I mean simply this uh, instability is uh, not normal I mean this is not an SSB radio so that is FM and uh, you know that uh, is something we uh, should not see so ah and now it is dropping almost uh, to 5 watt yeah definitely uh, and now it's dropping more so it might be a little bit uh, heat dependent in uh, some regard regards and um, dropping even more so I'm releasing the PTT and once again ah, now yeah it's going down it's really going down here so I mean PTT is uh, pushed and now power is gone so it's half a watt and you see that uh, is really a problem so let's uh, crack it open and uh, let's see uh, if there is something uh, obvious okay I have the lid open and uh, it is um, really interesting to see that uh, our power is um, back I mean not completely back uh, to uh, where we start okay so let's try once again and yeah okay and it is uh, going down so power is here for all of you who may not know so let me um, see what will happening if I go over to uh, the 70 centimeter band and there we have uh, 5 watt and uh, 4 3 4 so we have died in for 35 ah, so that is uh, not a problem that is uh, fine a normal tolerance but you see while I'm transmitting here our output power is going down so let me go back here to um, 2 meter <clears throat> Come on to two meter. Let's see. And yeah, one watt, and it's going down. So you see um, that uh, is obviously um, all fine. So no problem whatsoever. I'm on 144 megahertz so that is a dialed in frequency and yeah so that means uh, we clearly see uh, the same um, what we have been told so now uh, let's think about where to start okay so it is clear our carrier is not stable it is not constant and uh, well now we need to find a way where we start to troubleshoot so let's uh, have a look in our schematic to think about the approach how we can can uh, proceed very confusing even it is only the block diagram but um, well we have some uh, facts which uh, we can start with so we know okay something is wrong with transmitter so we have not our full output power and we know that uh, we can adjust the power at our radio and that might be a good starting point because if uh, we zoom in here a little bit 
we see around uh, our final uh, stage let me see where we uh, have it okay so I already can uh, see it so hang on a second I um, enlarge it here a little bit more so that uh, we all can uh, follow along and uh, what uh, we see here so that is our power amplifier here we have our driver and uh, here is our pre-driver and uh, as I told you so we have uh, tested it uh, right in the beginning that we can adjust the wanted out output power so we have low mid and high and uh, therefore there must be um, you know somewhere a kind of switch whatever and what we can see here already we see power adjust and that might be really a good starting point uh, to think about so then we see here power CNT might uh, mean power control and what uh, we see as well is that we have here APC which uh, most likely stands uh, for automatic uh, power control so that means that uh, we adjust one hand for wanted power and then we get a feedback um, how much power really goes out to our antenna and uh, this both um, adjustments get compared by a comparator and uh, then um, you know our power amplifier and uh, in our case here our pre-driver will get an information on um, what uh, we have um, adjusted as uh, wanted power and uh, what we get back here as uh, APC or also called ILS um, so uh, yeah ILC sorry so for uh, automatic level control or APC so that uh, is the same thing anyways um, now we can start here so we uh, need to get uh, this uh, power control information from somewhere and that is uh, in our case most likely our uh, CPU which uh, is right uh, over here and uh, well uh, you know the CPU um, have or has to control so many different things that this here are most likely I have not uh, looked it up uh, but I believe we have here yeah, it is a, a digital analog uh, converter which means that uh, it is a kind uh, of multiplexer so we get here um, data so that is clock and that is uh, data so that means that uh, our uh, digital analog controller gets uh, informations from the CPU telling our multiplexer what um, the wanted power will be and uh, then we can see here that uh, we have here a power control and then we have something called uh, TX drive okay so far so good and uh, what uh, where do we have it okay so we have here yeah so we have here a TX drive and of course uh, we have here our voltages uh, the same we have here at uh, our pre-drive so we have uh, our 9 volt and then uh, the uh, TX voltage so it only switch um, if uh, we press uh, our PTT and therefore um, yeah we need to check first of all do we have uh, our power adjustment so the power control the input to 
Q1512, which is uh, most likely uh, an operational uh, amplifier. And then uh, we uh, can check if uh, we have here to Q150 or no, 1508, uh, I believe. Uh, so that is a switch which uh, obvi obviously gets uh, switched by uh, transmit. So when we press our uh, PTT, okay, well, and that finally means uh, we really can start off. Uh, we can check uh, our uh, supply voltages, of course, and uh, what we should do is uh, see if uh, we have here our power control, our TX drive, which uh, are uh, DC voltages. And uh, then uh, what we can do else is uh, check if uh, we have uh, our bias voltages, which uh, we get here on uh, the pre driver. And uh, of course uh, we get uh, um, bias control on the driver and of course the controlled um, bias on our power amplifier. So let us start with it and um, our Q1023 uh, is uh, what we are looking for first. And here we are on the main board and uh, what we see here is our Q1023 and we see here pin 19 is uh, power control and uh, pin 20 is uh, TX drive. And let's see if uh, we have this both uh, voltages. So that will be uh, DC voltages. And uh, let's see if this both voltages are stable. So that is uh, really important. Okay, and when we zoom in here on the board, we have our Q1023. Uh, uh, and uh, that is... Uh, come on, focus. So that is uh, down there, this little chip. And uh, what we want uh, to see, so we want uh, to see our power control and uh, our TX drive, which uh, is uh, on pin, uh, so here's pin 1, so here's our white dot, so then that means uh, this is 19 and this is pin 20. So um, 19 is uh, power control and let's start with uh, power control. Ah, and of course, not to forget, uh, I will uh, switch here between low, mid uh, and high while uh, I'm checking here for power control, right? Okay, and uh, we take here uh, our voltage and let me go down to the PCB. It should be down there, okay. so. For the moment in time we see nothing, but uh, let's see what happens when I press PTT. And we see 2.57 volt uh, DC for high, which uh, seems to be fine. And uh, while my power needle on uh, the a meter is wiggling around we see that uh, our uh, DC power a uh, DC voltage is uh, absolutely stable so no problem okay so let me switch it to low now it is uh, on low let's see and uh, it is almost one volt so that uh, is fine let's go to middle mid that is 1.6, uh, so that makes uh, sense. And uh, the next one is high, and we are back uh, to uh, 2.57, which uh, definitely makes uh, sense. All right. Okay, so now I'm with my probe uh, on pin 20, which is, uh, which is a TX drive, and uh, I am on uh, high power, so. Let's see, 3 volt, what is uh, okay. Let's see if it uh, changed 
it will uh, if it uh, changes uh, if I go down to low and yes it's going down I mean not that much let's go to mid let's see 2.7 and back to high and uh, 3 volt so that uh, means uh, that uh, this all is uh, looking uh, quite good so I do not think that uh, we have a problem uh, with uh, our logic okay so now let's uh, go here down to um, our inputs and uh, when we go here in the down left uh, area of uh, our uh, schematic you might uh, already uh, see um, yeah I guess you can see it so uh, we have here mm, maybe I enlarge it a little bit so all right so we have here a power control and we have here our APC input and you see um, this is uh, an uh, impedance converter nothing else and uh, then here that uh, is uh, our comparator it might be amplifying a little bit or not so I, sh I, I would need to, to uh, calculate it but uh, that is uh, not necessary right now so power controls uh, goes here to uh, the positive input and uh, is setting uh, if you like uh, the wanted uh, level right then uh, we have here of course our output which uh, goes here to our and that is a switch that is a Q1508 uh, which we have seen before and we see here our TX uh, voltage for UHF and VHF and uh, if a positive voltage comes to this NPN transistor which is connected to, to ground and that will pull our uh, PMP transistor to ground and that means that uh, our voltage will be present at the output so the um, voltage which uh, is coming out here our comparator and will go then first of all to uh, our pre-driver which uh, is this here and you can see it here it gets uh, to our uh, input so that is biasing uh, our pre-driver and then we have here our so that is uh, RD07MVS1 uh, so that um, is our driver and then of course we have here so that here our RD70HUF2 uh, that is our power amplifier and uh, the power amplifier will get uh, biased uh, and controlled if you are following along here as well out uh, of our power controller and you see that uh, it is going here over the resistor and capacitor network to biasing here our gate uh, 1 and uh, gate 2 of course so you see this is a pass which uh, goes to uh, G1 uh, and the, those both uh, gates are biased right so now uh, I would like uh, to check here uh, what uh, we have uh, as uh, output here from uh, our uh, power control but uh, unfortunately I have uh, checked it uh, before so all these components um, the Q1508, uh, the D1516 here, this both uh, operational amplifiers and a lot of more uh, components uh, which uh, would be very helpful for diagnosing here our uh, problem are underneath and uh, so we uh, do now a little uh, different approach um, 
since we are not able to uh, probe these points uh, easily, um, we check here the bias at uh, our uh, pre-driver, we check the bias at our driver and of course we check uh, always for uh, the supply voltages, of course. And uh, additional to that, uh, we can check uh, our our bias voltage at our amplifier. So let's start and let's see what uh, the figures are telling us. Okay, and uh, where are our components here on the board? So down there under this uh, ground click clip here we have our pre-driver then we have uh, here our driver so that is the same chip uh, we know from uh, the Yaesu FT817 or 856 uh, 857 and uh, so forth and so forth so we uh, know that uh, as a driver or even uh, at the 817 as final uh, so that is a well-known uh, component and then here under our um, cooling heat sinks here what have we uh, we see uh, our gates and uh, there we can uh, start so let me start at uh, the pre-driver and I reposition the camera that uh, you can read our uh, voltage meter okay so, and as I told you, we start uh, at the pre-driver and we start at um, our drain, which is a supply voltage. And yes, uh, our 9 uh, volt is present, so no problem whatsoever. Now I go to the gate. So I'm probing the gate and of course I have to press my PTT, which uh, we do now and we read 1.1 volt which hmm seems to be a little bit low but uh, I don't know yet anyways let me go to uh, the driver and uh, this should be yeah so that uh, is the drain and supply voltage and let me go here to the gate Let's see what we have there and that looks pretty good so 2.3 volt as a bias voltage for our driver seems to be good and now let's uh, go over to the final uh, I start here with uh, gate what is it 2 I believe I don't know so I'm down and now let me press PTT and we read 340 millivolt which uh, is quite low let me go go to um, gate 1 which is here and now let me press PTT and oops what is that so we definitely um, have here nothing so let me see so you see I'm pressing here PTT and uh, we are reading a negative um, gate voltage which is definitely wrong so um, no doubt that is uh, not good back to uh, gate uh, 2 well, that is gate 2 let me and we have 340 wow so from the first look it looks like that uh, we have a short unbelievable okay so let me take off here uh, our heatsink um, and let's uh, look underneath so that uh, we get uh, more um, insights okay and uh, our copper here is uh, off and uh, yeah what I see um, that must be a unit uh, I we have uh, modified for a better airflow. Um, anyways, uh, we have a problem 
So uh, here we have uh, our gate 2, gate 1, right? And uh, we have seen that uh, something doesn't uh, look quite uh, well. Um, no fun. Yeah, and meanwhile I uh, have checked here our data sheet and uh, the minimum uh, bias voltage uh, which we should uh, see here at uh, our gates uh, should be 2. Point, uh, yeah, let me say 5 or 2.6 uh, volt. Um, so, uh, and what we see is uh, that we see nothing. And uh, we have seen here at uh, this point that uh, everything uh, was uh, good so far. Only the voltage was much too low, only 315 uh, milli. Uh, volt and we have seen here a negative uh, voltage and what you hear is a short and yeah I believe we have a dead final which uh, is so much known from uh, this units here so I mean, it is a critical uh, unit, so that is not the first time where we see a dead um, power amplifier and uh, that also we have here our modification. Um, it is not finally sure that it is um, really the power amplifier. The easiest thing uh, would be we try to lift here the input and uh, then we do uh, we we check uh, for short again and there then we can say is it uh, here our um, our IC or is it something different so let me lift up here our our uh, G1 or is it or is it gate 2 anyways it is one gate even it is uh, gate 2 or gate 1 it doesn't matter this uh, gate here looks shorted. Okay, as uh, you might see, so we uh, have lifted here uh, the gate pin and uh, you see the gap, so there is uh, definitely no contact. So here this is ground and of course um, here the other one as well. And uh, we had here uh, a short and now it is gone but we do not have a short here either and that uh, you know is a little bit funny uh, since um, if uh, the short is here not uh, in our amplifier so where should it uh, be else, right? Um, so maybe uh, simply because uh, it was uh, already uh, faulty that uh, finally uh, our uh, soldering here on the component uh, killed it uh, completely or um, we definitely have here somewhere another uh, problem or if you are really lucky um, our amplifier is good. Wow! So, hmm, let's go ahead and uh, let's connect the radio back uh, to our power supply to see uh, what we can uh, measure uh, for our bias voltages. Okay, so let's uh, try if we can get uh, managed it uh, this way. So I go down uh, to gate and uh, remember I uh, told you that I would expect at uh, the gate um, a bias voltage of about 2.5, 2.6 volt, whatever, but never our uh, uh, 316 um, millivolt, which is definitely wrong. So let me go down here to the gate, which is still in place and uh, let me now switch uh, to transmit and let's see what we have 
2.4 volt. So that makes much more sense to me and uh, that is funny. Even with uh, only this um, final we are peaking here 25 volt whatever so okay uh, that uh, makes sense as well uh, because this portion is uh, definitely um, fine and the other one is here um, flapping here in the air or in the breeze or whatever and let me go down uh, to this point underneath um, the contact of our uh, amplifier let's see what we have there and there we have also our 2.4 so yeah what does that mean now well I believe I believe that uh, most likely uh, our amplifier dial died while uh, we were also lifting here uh, our contact right um, but uh, yeah, you can see it here, right? Um, but, you know, what I try, I uh, put it down uh, to the board and uh, let's see what we have then. But uh, let me first show you uh, our output power. Ah, okay, I know that is uh, not the best uh, camera position, but anyways, uh, what uh, you see here, uh, we are at uh, 30 watt, so the lower scale is um, the one which is important. So that means uh, scale end is 30 watt. Remember, only one um, portion of our double pack uh, MOSFET is uh, in circuit. And now let me press here PTT. And you see it is more than 20 watt, more than 20 watt, 25 watt. So that is makes really sense as uh, 25 watt yeah so that really makes uh, sense since both uh, would make uh, 50 watt so you see uh, with uh, only the half it is half the power um, anyways let me uh, put uh, here the gate down back to the board and let's see what that means yeah, and you see it, uh, I have uh, just tacked it here to the board, so uh, it is not uh, good, it is not a good uh, soldering joint, but uh, you know, it uh, is conducting and uh, that is the most important thing. And now let's see if uh, we have again only 313 volt, so let me go to the good side of our MOSFET double pack and 2.4 volt which is fine and now the other one 2.4 volt which is uh, fine but yeah it is the same picture so I'm uh, watching uh, the watt meter and uh, we only having 25 watt so that means um, you know, the short uh, was uh, gone by uh, simply soldering here uh, our pin and uh, but uh, it was toasted before so what we know is uh, now the, um, the short is gone and uh, the half double pack uh, does its jobs so, so therefore we have 25 watt but uh, uh, the second half of uh, the double pack uh, is definitely dead and that means it is dead and it needs to be replaced so let's see how we go ahead okay so I've spoken uh, with the owner of the radio and uh, he decided we go ahead with half power so that means he wanted uh, or he wants uh, to use the radio with uh, only one portion of our double pack MOSFET amplifier and uh, well you know I'm not so convinced that uh, it is the best idea because I do not really know um, what uh, that uh, is doing uh, to you know 
the impedance uh, and um, you know that might change the input uh, impedance and uh, those um, you know the SWR inside our um, radio so the signal pass from the driver to the final mm. might be not uh, that good but uh, I would need uh, much more time to do a valid investigation on that anyways I mean uh, the amplifier is uh, toasted um, one way or the other so therefore um, we can take the risk and uh, let's see how long it uh, will last okay but uh, before we uh, release it uh, for operation let's uh, take some uh, lab uh, figures and uh, those um, once again our output power so the radio is set to low and uh, we see 2.3 watt okay so let's go to mid now we have mid power which is uh, eh, almost 12 watt and let's go for high power which is 26 tw 23 so uh, 23 watt and uh, yeah it is almost half of what uh, the radio should be able to push out anyways uh, that uh, is uh, not too bad let me go back to low and low I want to check uh, the modulation figures so let's see what we have so come on yeah so what we see here we have a distortion of yeah when I talk it is different but without talking it is uh, 1.8 2 percent with a deviation of 2.5 with 2.2 watt output power and the sign is good by a one kilohertz uh, test tone I mean that is good so uh, nothing to uh, complain here so uh, I mean yeah with that we could release it for uh, operation okay but uh, with a final like uh, this uh, we really need to check uh, the harmonics not uh, to have something you know on the air which uh, is disturbing the whole uh, ham radio community and of course we have to check if it is still um, in uh, you know uh, the rated um, values which uh, we have by law and therefore let's check it so first of all our carrier which is on 144 megahertz and uh, you see uh, we are at uh, 43 dBm which is equal to 20 uh, watt output power okay just fine and uh, now let's go over to uh, analysis uh, harmonic viewer and uh, you see no you can't see uh, let me put it this way okay so now you see center at uh, 144 let me check what we have and uh, we have our second harmonic at uh, minus 51 dbc also uh, 51 dbc below uh, carrier and that is just fine so we are within uh, the spec third minus 64 fourth minus 78 and fifth at minus 75 all right but uh, the first one is very important because that is uh, the strongest one and uh, that is fully in spec minus 52 right now which is fine no problem whatsoever so that means we really can let it go okay I have to admit that is a funny um, end of uh, this job so I uh, didn't expect that but uh, anyways um, 
you know, radio is used as a base station and uh, so uh, 10 uh, or 15 watt uh, output power is uh, just fine and we have seen with uh, setting here on a uh, high it is uh, over uh, 20 watt, uh, between 20 and 25 watt so alright, let's see uh, what will happen uh, next so uh, when uh, will we see uh, the radio back um, very interesting, so I'm very excited, but uh, anyways, it is uh, as it is, so we can obviously go with uh, uh, one MOSFET, um, uh, and uh, so it is, yeah, that is the end of our funny video, thanks for watching, and uh, catch you next time, bye.